Good morning. This is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. Um, Matthew 24, 12. It says, Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And then it says, The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and the end would come. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to tell you what lawlessness means. And according to the Strong's Concordance, it means a condition without law because of ignorance of it, or violation of it, or contempt, or violating the law. And that's really important in Thessalonians 2.7. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, lawless one will be revealed. The coming of the lawless one is, a, in, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception. What the scripture is referring to is, if you take a look at it, it starts talking about the kingdom of God. So the opposite of the mystery of lawlessness is the kingdom of God. And God said the mystery of lawlessness is, it's all talking about unrighteousness. It's when God's people are not walking in the righteousness of who they are, as kings and have authority and dominion over all the world and put the devil in his place. Um, it talks about the works of uh, Satan. In 2 Thessalonians 2 7, the mystery of, of lawlessness, it talks about, um, it says, He who is already, at, okay, the lawlessness is already at work. He who now restrains, now that's the Holy Spirit. And where is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is in us. So the Holy Spirit in us is restraining Satan from doing all his signs and wonders, okay? And the coming of the lawless, lawlessness one is according to the work of Satan with all power, signs and wonders, with all unrighteousness, deception among those who are perishing. Um, uh, and here's another thing that God showed to me. <clears throat> People are afraid they're going to be deceived because there's things going on in the world that God's doing signs, wonders, and miracles that he never did before. Like, right here, it tells you what the work of Satan is. It says, okay, first of all, look at the work of Jesus. The work of Jesus was healing the sick, casting out demons, cleansing the leopards, raising the dead, and, um, um, See, raising the dead and preaching the gospel to the poor. Okay, so the works of Satan is making people sick, killing people, making them poor, making them black, uh, everything that's not like heaven on earth. So that's the work of Satan, and they take pleasure in unrighteousness. Now you can have a Christian who's saved, but they're taking pleasure in unrighteousness because all they do is they go to church on Easter and on Christmas, and that's it. The rest of the time they live like everyone else in the world. They're poor, they're sick, they're deceased, they're dying. They have no power and no life. Um, they are working under the lawlessness because they are not enforcing the defeat of the devil. They are not standing up to being righteous and working that righteousness. Let me tell you what we're supposed to be doing. Um, the love of many will grow, grow cold because of lawlessness. Satan is going to try to prove to you the word does not work, just like he did in the garden of uh, Eden to Adam and Eve, just like he did with the temptation of Jesus, has God said. And if you're the son of God, prove it. Okay, so so the, the, lawless, the mystery of lawlessness is Satan saying that God's work doesn't work. Okay, now what we're supposed to do because the kingdom of God is in us, because we have authority and dominion over all this earth, we are supposed to be ruling. And let me read to you this scripture right here. In Jeremiah 23, 5. It talks about what we are. First of all, in the, Old, in the New Testament, it says that Jesus is the vine and we're the branch. Okay? Then the Old Testament, it says this is what we're supposed to be doing. A branch of righteousness, that's us, a king, shall reign and prosper, execute judgment and righteousness in all the earth. Okay, are we doing that? In uh, Genesis 1, we were told to have dominion and authority and subdue the earth. Okay, what does that mean? That means that everything that's not from God needs to be under our feet, needs to be subdued. Sickness, death, disease, poverty, lack, fear, uh, everything that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We should be pointing our finger at that tornado and saying, be gone in Jesus' name. Stop in Jesus' name. And it should rise up and be gone. Okay? We should be speaking to somebody who's trying to uh, rob us or rape us. In Jesus' name, you cannot touch me. Okay? We should have authority and dominion and we have to control this earth. And if you look at that scripture, let's go into another. Those, Romans 5.17, those who receive the abundance of grace 
and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Christ Jesus. Okay? We are to rule and reign on this. And the mystery of lawlessness is Satan working against Christians to make them think that the word does not work, that they do not have authority, they do not have the right to rule and reign and, and, and say what to do. He's going he's gonna to challenge you. And the word here is consistency. The more consistent you are of laying hands on the sick, the more consistently you will see them healed. The more dead people you find, dead animals, dead plants, whatever, and practice and lay hands on them, the more you will see get up. You are a king, and you are to enforce what's happening. And you'll see as time goes by, more and more Christians will fall because Satan has come at them so hard that they'll begin to believe their experiences over the Word of God. And you know how that scripture says, the love of many will grow cold. Okay, well, herein is our love made perfect, that we have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay? Um, that's enforcing our, using the power and dominion that we have in this world. It also says Philippians 1, 9. That was uh, 1 John 4, 17. Philippians 1, 9 says, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment. So, our love is the is power in us to enforce God's love in us to enforce the judgment of the devil he has been judged and found guilty we're innocent and he's trying to reverse that and we need to enforce his defeat and the victory that the love of Jesus gave us 